Hi, it's Thea. Today I'm reviewing this brand new set of Spira Farben watercolor paints. There are 40 48 watercolor paints in this set that has that cute little hook in the back and 20 sheets of 230 weight watercolor paper that actually comes in this brick type of um, holder and it's amazing paper. Here is the little color chart that I'll be coloring in in a bit. It also comes with, well, there's a little intro. And that's the nice blending palette. Okay, look at these colors. And it also comes with a tube of white, which everybody runs out of, along with black. And in these individual... Um, little mini palettes they have six colors in each and it also has a large and a small I think they're called watercolor pens I'm not even sure let me let me hold, hold on let me check yes they're watercolor brush pens and I should make it clear that the white in the tube is white gouache so if you want to make any of the paints more opaque you could add the white to it while lightening it up so i filled up the watercolor pens with water and i figured i would just jump right in and give it a whirl now also stay tuned because i'm going to announce that this is going to be a giveaway also i'm going to give away well I am, and Spira Farbit is going to give away one of these sets. They were nice enough to send me this lovely set. Um, so I'll be announcing that in a little bit. So to use those brushes, you just squeeze that little button on the side. The water comes down. It's released. And you can see right off the bat, these colors are gorgeous. So I started to do the color chart and I figured I would just do that in a little bit and take a picture of it and then show you the completed chart. So after that, I figured I would test out the paper. Now I like watercolor paper in a brick. This happens to be cold press acid-free paper. So all your work will stay perfectly. I should also mention the paints are completely non-toxic. It also helps the paper to stay straight and not bend. So I'm just doing a really quick little pumpkin here because I'm going to do lots of layers. So that means lots of water and we'll be able to see pretty quickly how it, how it holds up. And so far, so good. So as you can see at this point, the left side of the pumpkin is saturated. There's no bending. There's no warping. And I don't plan on stopping. <laughs> I just, I, I really want to see how this holds up. And I can tell you, I can do a spoiler ahead of time. It did, it was perfect. This paper is gorgeous. It has the perfect texture. And... It's, bl it's blazing white and the colors show up lovely. And you can see even with the few colors that I've used here that the colors are so far outstanding. And once again, I, I used these colors in the set without looking at the price. I, I drew this pumpkin and I'm also going to color something from my coloring book later. To first of all test out of course these paints that I'm reviewing but to see how the coloring book holds up but that's another story um, and amazingly enough the colors are gorgeous and I don't I don't my point is I don't I don't know how they they did they do this I looked at the price it's $34 and that's for the whole set that's for all these gorgeous colors with the white, with 
the watercolor pens and with the pad of paper and with that gorgeous holder that has the ring in the back so you can hold it in your hand while you're working. I'm also going to be coloring in itty bitty tiny teeny Halloweeny, which is my spooky cute little new coloring book that I made very simply, very very small, so there's no stress in coloring. Oh, there's a little Red Riding Hood in the spooky forest. I want to see if also this black page, this black page behind each image, is going to make for um, a better experience when you use watercolor, especially watercolor paints, because it, 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 I mean, it's not going to be perfect because it's not watercolor paper, but I just have a feeling that the black behind it is going to make it better. So let's see how these paints work in my newest coloring book. You see those little drops? I put a drop of water onto each little tiny color. There's another view of the swatch card, which I actually think is printed on the paper that she included. Um, I did that little drop because I find it much nicer when you use watercolor paints to put a little bit of water on each one. So I chose this picture from the book only because it has the most white and it will, it'll accept the most color. Some of them have a lot of a black background. This has some, but this one's going to take a lot of water. So I also wanted to show as many of the colors as possible. There's 48 colors, everything from pure white to Arlington's gray shade, which is about as close to black as you're going to get. In my humble opinion, it's black and it's a, it's a super jet black. There's also Payne's gray and Hooker's green. There's also a Hooker's light green and, um, in once again, in my humble opinion, I'm using it right there. If if you're drawing trees or foliage or forests or any kind of botanicals, Hooker's green is is a perfect color and it's in the set. That was yellow green. And I also used the palette and I was mixing a whole bunch of the colors to get all those different greens. Well, let me see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pure greens. Everything from yellow green to olive to the, to a color called New Meadow, which is, I don't know, it's just so pretty. I can't even say it's, it's not celery, it's not spring, it's just, it's a perfect bright green without, that's it right there, without being um, absinthe-ish. So Hooker's is probably darker. It's more like a forest green. There's also a Hooker's green light in this set, which I was really happy to see. I don't think I've ever seen that in a set before. But as you can see, the greens are beautiful. I, I switched over to a regular watercolor brush just because I was used to it. And I, I used the watercolor pens for the pumpkin. So I just wanted to see how it worked with a regular brush, how the set worked with a regular brush also. So far, I, I fell quickly in love with the set. And when I saw that it was only $34, I, I don't know how they do this, but I, I, ahead of the game, I'm giving this set a thumbs up. I've tried every single color. Every color is pigmented, bright, beautiful. They're, I can't even say there's a shine to them, but they're definitely not flat. They're almost, they're slightly like alive looking. They're just beautiful. I have to say that this is a really well thought out set. 
gorgeous. That is cerulean blue on the blueberries. I ended up using Prussian blue, indigo, even a few violets on the on these blueberries. Um, I think the only one that I didn't use on the blueberries is the ultramarine blue. And actually, now that I come to think of it, I may have used it on the little tiny bits on the bottom. The colors are so clear. And they're very natural without being dull. I say this is a, a really sophisticated color palette and set. I love it. There's a mermaid green that just reminds you of the ocean in the Caribbean. Now this little fairy is sitting on a flower and I'll show you later. I, in my head, oh, that's the Naples yellow light. I just wanted to do the moon really quickly. As you can see, I'm doing none of this perfectly. I just wanted to show you, first of all, how fun the set is. Second of all, most of the colors. And third, that you don't have to drive yourself crazy with art. If you, if you, like, you do it any way you like to do it. Just, if you want to do it fast, if you want to do it um, halfway, if you, if you look at the leaves, even the blueberries, I didn't fill everything in. I didn't want to. That's actually a really dark purple. That's a deep violet. I like using colors for shadows versus black because I think it's more realistic and it's, it makes the image look less flat. So even for shadows, I prefer blues and violets. So so far, I am in love with this set, and I think you will be too. So, we're giving away one entire package of these Spirofarben paints, the pack of paper, the brushes, and of course, the swatch card and the palette. So, yeah, all you have to do is leave me a comment below, be a subscriber here, you can like the video if you're already a subscriber, and thank you very much if you are. And if you share, you will be entered twice, so you'll have two chances to win. I'll leave all the details in the info box below the video, including the info for the Teeny Halloween coloring book and the link to this set for anyone who doesn't want to wait for the giveaway. I totally get it. So as you can see, in my head, when I drew this picture, the flower was yellow. But since I want to show as many of these colors as I can, and the petals would be darker in front of her, I figured, what the heck, I'll just use as many colors. Oh, this color is called Pink Dust. And I figure I will make her the pinkest, cutest little fairy that I possibly can. So I made her hair this pink dust color, which I don't know if I've ever seen this color in a watercolor set. It's almost like a violet based ballet slipper color. It's so pretty. That, what I'm using right there, is buff. I figured I would use it as the base of her skin. And then I also used yellow orange, light yellow ochre, and a little bit of burnt sienna for some of the details and the shading. You can see me use some of the using some of the darker colors now. That was the actually I think that was the light yellow ochre. And here's one of those examples where if you finished your artwork in the middle of it, you would think you were a terrible artist because Sometimes you're just, you're just not finished and you just have to take your time and kind of like the process. That was also pink dust. 
I ended up using pink dust again and I mixed it with some of the white and I also used poppy red later and um, Scarlet Lake also mixed with white just to come up with all different kind of pinks. So you can see that I, I used that same color, but I mixed it with pink. I'm sorry, but I mixed it with the white. Um, so it gives it a, a whole new look. It's a little bit more opaque and it's lighter. That is deep orange mixed with yellow orange. Again, not being perfectly neat. I just wanted you to get the idea of the gorgeousness of the set. I didn't want to really, I'm not, I'm not really highlighting my, my watercolor skills, but happily you can get to see so many of the different colors here. There's a lot of stuff going on in this, in this image. Um, so like, like I said before, I just wanted you to be able to see as many of the pretty colors as possible. That color is, I think it's pronounced gamboge. You know what? I'm going to look that word up because I don't know what that means. Oh, I'm so glad I looked it up. Gamboge is a partially transparent deep saffron to mustard yellow pigment. And it's used to, to dye Buddhist monks' robes. I'm so glad I looked that up. That's so cool. And it's a gorgeous color, as you can see. I used it mixed with yellow orange and deep orange to make the petals darker as they were getting closer to the front of the image. That color is lemon yellow. And I could have made this so much more detailed and taken more time, but I never know how much to put in the videos and take out of the videos. I don't want you to fall asleep um, because if it was up to me, I would take three days to, to make the picture and you'd probably never watch me again. But um, I figured that this was enough. It was enough color. It was enough detail. And um, it's not perfect, but I think, I think it's good. So once again, this set, I give this set two thumbs up, actually. I'm amazed about the price. I would highly recommend it. If you've ever considered getting into watercolor, now is, now is the time. Um, I also have to say, I know it's about my own book, but... Itty Bitty Tiny Teeny Halloweeny is basically simple, but with the new black backing of the pages, you can totally use these watercolors. So the video's almost over at this point. I'm just kind of, you know, fussing around. I kind of made a mistake on the bottom. Uh, I was gonna make the center of the flower gray and then I was going to make it brown so then I just took let me see what color did I go over it with it was either burnt umber or brown and literally went over the whole area um, and then I used that mixture of pink dust and white for her dress and then for the little flowers um up above by her arms, sort of like by her collar, I mixed poppy red with the white again. Oop, I'm just using some more pink down there to make that little fuzzy area. And I also added some to her hair. I forgot about that. So now I'm finishing the big blueberry that she's holding. That is a mixture of cerulean blue and I also added a little indigo oh and there's that purple in the center again I think you can see it a little better this this time and I also added a little purple on the bottom for a shadow and then I took some of the Prussian blue and the indigo underneath everything 
for a shadow. Oh, and there's the poppy red mixed with the white. Added some highlights on the wings. Once again, you can see none of this is perfect, but in my humble opinion, it still looks cute. So don't torture yourself, just have fun. I added some of that poppy red to her hair. Oh, so it's almost over. So if you wanna enter, you know what to do. Leave a comment like the video, and if you share, you're entered two times. And once again, I'll leave all the information in the detail box below. So if you have no patience like me and you wanna buy now, it'll all be there. Also, if you wanna join my coloring gallery, that'll be down there too. So that's about it for now. You got to see the majority, well, I don't know, yeah, I think the majority of paints in the set, even if it was just in a teeny tiny area. Um, once again, thumbs up. Thank you for joining me. And uh, that's about it. There she is. Blueberry Fairy. And oh my gosh, Spira Farben, you have outdone yourself. A super thumbs up. And somebody's going to get the whole set. So you just saw me dipping into the white and I wanted to see if the white was opaque enough to make little stars on this pitch black background. And as you can see, the answer is yes. So there, I, I love this set. I think you will too. And I do hope that you're all safe out there. I know this is an interesting time in the world. Um, but I hope you're all hanging in there and uh, happy and healthy for the most part. So that is it for now. Let me know what you think of this picture. Whoop, I goofed a little bit. So all I did was dip my brush in the water and very gently go over the goof area before it dries. And as you can see, no problem. So, yep, that's it. And uh, thank you for watching once again. Um, I appreciate all of you very much. And, uh, oh, that's the palette. That's what the set looked like afterwards. And it was so easy to work with. And there she is. Once again, thumbs up. Thumbs up to it all. Thank you again. Good luck. I hope you enter and I will see you soon. Bye.